Good morning and welcome. I'm Danny Higley, your worship associate this morning. Welcome to our service this Sunday. This morning, we will hear a video from the Vol Bolton Refuge House, who is our 50-50 Share the Plate recipient this month, along with some very talented musicians. Also, if you missed attending the UUC membership class on Saturday, you are welcome to contact Reverend Lepp for a one-to-one -one membership orientation. Our new member Sunday will be on Sunday, January 17th. Our opening words this morning are thresholds by Arlene Goff. Thresholds. We cross them every day from room to room, from outside to inside and back again, from here to there, from anywhere to everywhere, from age to age. Each threshold offers an opportunity for change, for renewal, for transformation, from what we were and what we are to what we can be. In this hour and in this place, we cross a threshold from our day-to-day -day everydayness into space and time attuned to the other, to the sacred, to the holy, into an awareness of new life pregnant with possibilities. How will we be renewed in this moment? How will we be changed by this hour? How will we be transformed through this gathering of beloved community? Come, you longing, thirsty souls. Come, let us worship together.
So here at Bolton Refuge House, we help individuals of many different types of demographics. The biggest thing that I would say we're known for is our emergency sheltering services. So at times we can house different individuals, a lot of families. We also assist individuals in accessing other community referrals, but the main thing is catering to victims of domestic violence, intimate partner violence, human sex trafficking, and sexual assault. COVID has definitely had a big impact on Bolton. It's been very challenging for individuals, hard for them in the way that they have to socially distance themselves from other people in the community or asking people to be really cautious and aware when they leave the shelter. We as staff have to wear masks, our face shield. All of the offices have plexiglass, but it's really challenging for victims who are coming from very traumatic situations in a sense of they have already experienced not being able to access all of their belongings in their places in their house. So when they come here and it's hard for them to come to a safe place and be asked if they've been exposed to COVID or feeling well. It's hard when they get here though. And you know, you see people and you kind of want to connect and you want to, you know, bond, but it's hard. It has been a challenge, but we're hopeful for 2021 and that, you know, we will get better as a community and as a nation. But the main thing right now is just keep everybody safe, maintain the CDC recommendations, and also really stress to individuals that not only do they need to be safe for themselves, but they need to be safe for other individuals. We want to be here. We want to see the people that we see. They need to be here. Patience is huge understanding is huge and without the community we would not have the supplies that we have to stay open and to make sure that we don't have an outbreak because the reality is is if we had an outbreak here it would be very hard to maintain our standards the way that they are we can't let any of our community members down we can't let any of our victims and survivors down Good morning, I'm Nate Otto. I am VP of the UUC board this year. Welcome to the UUC congregation. Uh, we are a religious community who commit ourselves to diversity. We hope to nourish human differences, those of gender, race, age, ability, sexual orientation, political views, class, and religious belief and culture. Welcome to all who treasure freedom of conscience in the search for truth. We promise to do our best to provide, a, to provide you a spiritual home. We extend a special welcome to our visitors today. We hope you follow our, our Facebook page to participate in Zoom and receive announcements about our special events and our religious exploration classes. Please sign in for our weekly email. There should be a link in the comments section on our Facebook page where you can sign up. Also, families can follow our UUC Religious Exploration Facebook page. There are religious exploration classes for 4K through ninth grade and youth group every Wednesday online for middle school and high school. We're glad you can join us today. Hi, my name is Kate Spencer. We invite you to light your chalice at home with these words by Sean Trapp. Our chalice reminds us that the fire within ourselves is the same fire that illuminates the universe. It is our reminder that all is connected, even though the space of the void is vast and our experience here is but a blip in the cosmic timeline. This flame is our promise that in our smallness and our short time on this earth, that we live intently and deeply with love for one another, with honesty and integrity, to be guided by rational thought and critical thinking and with a sense of shared responsibility. For as the late astronomer Carl Sagan reminded us, this pale blue dot is the only home we've ever known.
This is A Seed Knows How to Wait by Hope Jarin. A seed knows how to wait. Most seeds wait for several years before starting to grow. A cherry seed can wait for 100 years with no problem. What exactly each seed is waiting for is known only to that seed. Some unique trigger combination of temperature, moisture, and light, and many other things are required to convince a seed to jump off the deep end and take its chance, to take its one and only chance to grow. A seed is alive while it waits. Every acorn on the ground is just as alive as the 300 year old oak tree that towers over it. Neither the seed nor the old oak is growing. They are both just waiting. Their waiting differs, however, in that the seed is waiting to flourish while the tree is only waiting to die. When you go into a forest, you probably tend to look up at the plants that have grown so much taller than you ever could. You probably don't look down where just beneath your single footprint sits between 100 and a, and a thousand seeds, each one alive and waiting. When you are in the forest, for every tree that you see, there are no less than three million more trees waiting in the soil, fervently wishing to be. When the embryo within a seed starts to grow, it basically just stretches out of its doubled over waiting posture, elongating into official ownership of the form that it assumed years ago. The hard coat that surrounds a peach pit a sesame or mustard seed, or a walnut shell mostly exists to prevent this expansion. In the laboratory, we simply scratch the hard coat and add a little water, and it's enough to make almost any seed grow. I must have cracked, a thousands, must have cracked thousands of seeds over the years, and yet the next day's green never fails to amaze me. Something so hard can be so easy if you just have a little help. In the right place, under the right conditions, you can finally stretch out into what you're supposed to be. Each beginning is the end of a waiting. We are each given exactly one chance to be. Each of us is both impossible and inevitable. Every replete tree was first a seed that waited. This is an excerpt, page 30 to 31, from Lab Girl by Hope Jarin. Good morning, everybody. I'm the Reverend Julianne Lupp, and I'm here to um, talk about our joys and concerns. This is the time in our service where we share what is on our hearts and minds. And let's be honest, last week was a tough week uh, for this whole country. And, um, and I know that that has been on the hearts and minds of many, and we will definitely lift up that concern into this space. If you have a joy or concern that you would like to share in the sacred community, you can post it in the chat and it will be shared. Um, for those that are in Zoom today for service, we will also share um, after we are done with service in our own voices. So I invite you into this special space to share your joys and concerns either on Facebook or here in Zoom, and I will read those aloud into this community. I would like to offer a candle of joy for my friend January, who overcame serious um, COVID and is now okay and her family is okay. And that brings me great joy. I want to lift up for Julia Brown, a friend. Um, that she's lifting up who has COVID and has lost her memory. A candle from Angie who says it's a joy to find the UU. And Rose has a candle my daughter Violet asked me to share her excitement that she heard her baby's heartbeat for the very first time. And um, if you didn't know Violet, Violet grew up in this congregation. And so 
that's a particular joy. Um, Anne Shell says, a joy for David's retirement. Congratulations, David. Don Pierce says that I am loving more and more of my friends getting the COVID-19 vaccine. Yes, that is amazing. Teresa Ritzinger says that she is sharing a joy that my parents are able to move this week to assisted living space to get the care that they need. Randy Dobchuk shares that UU services and the people, a sense of change and growth within our country, concerns people with COVID, people who feel disconnected and alone. A joy from Danny um, that Zoom cats who always come on <laughs> when she's on. <laughs> um, Andy Swanson uh, lights a candle for Bob, who is having minor surgery this Thursday. So we will wish him well on that. And Linda, who lifts up that each seed is a miracle. I'd like to share a joy for our new member class yesterday. We had. Um, just these powerful synchronistic stories. I think that's one of my favorite things is when people share their spiritual journeys. And you may uh, remember being in a class like that and they, you know, why did you come to the UU or what draws you? And there's that powerful sense of being seekers and questioners and being born right the first time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so I light a candle for that. If you'll please join me in these words um, that we close our time of joys and concerns with. Love is the spirit of this church and service is law. This is our great covenant to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love and to help one another. Now we will hear from Larry who will sing one more step and um, that's a great joy. Good morning. One more step, we will take one more step. Till there is peace for us and everyone will take one more step. One more word, we will say one more word. Till every word is heard by everyone will take one more word. One more song, we will sing one more song. Till every song is sung by everyone, we'll sing one more song. One more seed, we will sow one more seed. Till there's a seed of hope, then everyone will sow one more seed. One more home, we will build one more Till there's a place for each and every one, we'll build one more home. One more bridge, we will cross one more bridge. Till we have found the peace we're looking for, we'll cross one more bridge. One more step. We will take one more step Till there is peace for us And everyone will take one more step This is Reflections from the River 
by Burton D. Carley. Since current times are kind of like a black hole, I was interested to read that researchers using NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope have traced the building blocks of the universe back one more step, and it leads to the massive black holes in space. We know that the Earth did not spring out of thin air, but is essentially recycled matter and higher elements. The story of Genesis gets it right in the sense that we truly come from dust, space dust. But where did that dust come from? Many galaxies have a black hole at their center, and the researchers, for the first time, were able to see how a supermassive black hole in a galaxy 8 billion light years from ours was shooting out winds carrying dust composed of complex elements. The theory is that black holes suck in simple gases at high velocity where they collide and are superheated, fusing together to form complex molecules and grains of dust. Thrust back into space, the dust eventually collects and forms stars and planets with the chemical compounds from which life can form. From chaos come the building blocks for creation. It is something good to remember when spiritual storms are brewing inside our lives and also outside. And how do we endure chaotic times? It seems counterintuitive, but it is through praise that we bear our transformations. The poet Rainer Maria Rilke understood this so well in the following poem translated by Albert Ernest Fleming. Oh, tell us poet, what is it you do? I praise, but in the midst of deadly turmoil, what helps you endure and how do you survive? I praise, and that which nameless is anonymous, how do you, poet, still call out to them? I praise, who grants you your right to pose in any guise, wear any mask, and still remain sincere? I praise, and that the stillness and the violence, like the star and storm, know and acknowledge you? Because I praise, we survive our deepest struggles because the human spirit rose from the dust with the possibility of joy and praise. It is why we come to church. So I'll leave it to Unitarians to combine black holes, politics, and poetry. <laughs> That's what we do, right? Yeah. So, so yeah, the our service today is about planting seeds of intention. And when I thought of this, I did not imagine um, that last Wednesday would happen. And, um, and it doesn't change what I was thinking about, but it certainly informs it. And you know, we all come from that little seed that starts when we are forming and then we become our little selves in the environments that we grow up in. Some of us are given a lot of water and sunlight some of us struggle because we don't receive the nurture we need. Some of us um, get lots of room to grow and some of us are crowded in until we can push our way to the top. And you know, there's so much um, analogy that you can find with seeds and with growth and with how we plant our seeds of intention. And I, and I don't want to get into this um, you know, my mind will make it so. <laughs> but but there is something about the power of psychology and the power of setting intentions. And I know for myself, um, since 2016, I have set the intention of speaking up, witnessing the love, and countering messages of hate because that's what we do. <laughs> And that's what I would want to do with my life. Um, <clears throat> when I was growing up um, in South Carolina, um, I often felt like a fish out of water. I, I was uh, growing up in the Bible Belt as a liberal and as a progressive person spiritually. Um, there are certainly people who live in the South who feel that way, but it was often on the outs. and. Um, and it taught me that I could either quiet my mouth, which I was often told as a woman that I should do and that I should smile and 
behave right and marry the right the right kind of person assuming a male <laughs> and um you know i got a little tired of that and i know that many of us in our worlds um have been told to act certain ways believe certain ways and you know there's only so long that our little branches wither when we um, are forced into boxes that don't fit us and I know I was super excited um, you know I lived in Atlanta for 12 years and um, felt super excited to see the first African-American senator to represent that state the first Jewish sen senator to represent that state and by God I'm gonna celebrate that <laughs> and I'm not gonna let people who would come into the people's house take that away from me and you know my seeds are um, continuing to have hope but also to pay attention you know pay attention when there is aggression against our democracy um, I've got my little handy dandy uh, you you uh, bookmark here bum, bum, bum. and Let's see, justice, equity, and compassion in human relations. That didn't happen last week, but we're gonna work on that. Okay, um, the right of conscience and the use of the democratic process within our congregations and society at large. Well, people try to take away our democracy, but that didn't happen. Good, okay, let's keep going. Um, the goal of world community with peace, liberty, and justice for all. Let's do that. So, you know, it's, it's, um, and, and I'm not trying to make light of anything. Um, what I'm trying to say is that, you know, there are difficult times and man, this has been probably the hardest year of my life, barring some, maybe some other years, but, but I know that for many of us, it's been a struggle to maintain our mental health, to uh, maintain our incomes, you know, maintain our our lives being apart from one another trying to find ways to connect and to be present to ourselves in the world and in the midst of all that you know worrying about a pandemic and worrying about our country and it's a lot it is so hard and you know we come to this space to love each other up a little bit <laughs> and i don't mean in a creepy way i mean in a in a community way and um and to and to be real you know this this is a tough time and you know i i read the uh, the reading that uh danny higley read earlier uh by hope jaron um i read lab girl um a couple years ago or it seems like a couple years ago time is really hard right now too <laughs> anyway i read it with my book club and um and lab girl is about a female scientist and it's a memoir if you haven't read it i really recommend it and she is um a geochemist and a geobiologist and uh and she talks about trees which of course i like i like trees but she um she grew up in minnesota and um this little town which did not expect a little girl to become a scientist um, her dad was a scientist and she would go hang out with her dad um, but she was not encouraged to follow that path but her heart and her drive and her her little branches kept pushing up and and it is and it, it is hard for women to break into science and that's um something that i know that um the world is trying to reform you know making things open to people of color, regardless of gender or, um, or sexual orientation, you know, we keep trying to open doors and, um, and, and she was someone who fought against that. Um, her, uh, the first part of her memoir is called rocks and leaves and it, um, and she kind of uses the metaphor of trees all through her memoir. And, and um, and then and and she actually sets up a lab in Georgia, which is kind of cool. Um, she goes from Minnesota to Georgia, so I felt this kinship with her. And she talked about you know the struggles of her own 
mental health and and um, trying to be healthy and and balancing career and life and and finally she talks about flowers and fruit and I don't want to give too much away this isn't a book report <laughs> but this this is real life you know she she is an academic and uh, it was very risky I I think to expose these struggles that she had and um, you know there's something about um, positive vulnerability that's really hard but that can be powerful um, if we do it in safe spaces and so when we talk about planting seeds of intention you know I I, I think about what is it about 2020 <laughs> that I want to throw into a dumpster fire that seems to be the favorite meme you know <laughs> dumpster fire but but there's also a lot of things that this time has shown us as well that this time has given us um, like a time of uh, a time of being able to find more spaciousness for thinking more um, more time to connect with family in a different way which is weird because we can't always be present with our family and to be more present with ourselves I know I haven't been going to as many night meetings or as many um, driving as much and um, and trying to find that um, that balance has been has been really amazing um, so I wanted to also bring up um, RuPaul because <laughs> you know you got to talk about a scientist and then I want to talk about a drag queen and RuPaul had a fantastic quote and said when you become the image of your own imagination it's the most powerful thing that you can ever do and when you're born into a body that does not feel like your body and into a society that tells you you should be a certain way um, for someone to transform into the person that they want to become is powerful and spiritual I would argue act and uh, I think all of us are on those kinds of journeys, you know, trying to figure out what matters, how we're going to do it, and how we're going to be okay in the meantime, you know. Like, uh, for me, I, ha I have a senior, and I'm trying to come to terms with the fact that they are about to fly off and do what they do, and, and to honor that and not hold them back. Um, you know, it's it's a balance. and. Um, and in my own life, you know, what, you know, how can I um, flourish and, 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 and be healthy? And, um, you know, we, I think every January it's like, set your intentions, set your goals. And, and, it, and it becomes a trap of shame and, well, I didn't meet my goals. Or, and, and so how do we find that balance of seeds? Um, and, and many of you know that I, I planted, uh, or we did a, a labyrinth garden this year. And, um, and uh, these dang squirrels kept digging up all my, <laughs> all my stuff. But then I had to make peace with that because they're squirrels and you know, they're going to do what they do. And I planted all of these bulbs around my little tree, crab apple tree. And I can't wait to see what seeds are going to come up. And... And you, you heard from uh, Danny, you know, how many, how many things are waiting to come up, you know, and so we choose, right? What's a weed? What's a flower? Um, and then in our, and then in my native garden, you know, I was trying to nurture those things that are, um, that other people would call weeds, uh, but that are actually really good for pollinators. So I think that metaphor works in our lives too, you know, to what, what are we nurturing? What are we planting? What are we growing? And in this community, hey, what what are we doing as this congregation? What you know, are are we we're sending our youth in a couple of weeks to go be at community table and um, to serve there? And um, you know, we're supporting the Bolton House as our 50-50 share the plate recipient. And we're saying that it's not okay to attack democracy. <laughs> It's not okay to um, to take away the rights of people, and, um, and it's also not okay to be a white supremacist. So, 
all those things. And, and, and I think that's important, you know, and, and sacred spaces, you know, so often we we're like, Oh, shouldn't say that. And, and we do, you know, we're a nonprofit, you know, obviously I don't um, even try and walk that line that, that skates that, but there's also a conscience and a morality that, that we feel called to speak up. And so I, I hope that you find communities of solidarity. And I know many of us are involved in trying to protect freedom and to, to speak up when things aren't right. And, and it's hard, it's hard, it takes, it's risky. And so be safe, um, but, but I hope you'll, you'll find the spaces where you feel like you can speak up and where you can grow, grow those, grow those, grow those branches. I'm going to close uh, this talk with the idea that we don't stop growing. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> I want to have it done. I want to be like, okay, I got there. Woo. But, uh, you know, after enlightenment, you chop wood, right? And, and um, so, so I think we, we keep working at it. And, um, and that's the part of that journey. You know, we're on this journey together um, in our own journey. And, and you're not alone, okay? You're not alone. I want you to know that. And, um, and you're surrounded by, you know, whatever your beliefs are. You know, we were talking about black holes and a big universe. You know, there's so much mystery and beauty in this world. And, um, and you're part of something bigger than yourself. And, and when you feel anxious and scared and worried, uh, tap into that. Tap into that nature, that beauty, that love. And know that this congregation will be here for you. So, namaste, friends. Stay with friends. Actually, um, Nate, I'm going to do the giving now. I'm going to pop back over here to me. Um, this is the time in our service where we uh, share our plate. If you don't know what that is, we normally we would <laughs> pass a plate around when we're in person, but we do it uh, virtually now. Um, and we share half of all non-designated funds um, with the 50-50 share the plate recipient, Bolton House. And Bolton Refuge House helps people in need, as you heard earlier. Um, you can donate online at uueauclair.com, or we even have a text to give. We got really savvy. <laughs> you can text to give uh, 84321. You can also write a check, you know, and drop it off at UUC or mail it to our address. The offering will now be given and gratefully received. Thank you. Thank you. 
Please join me at home with extinguishing your chalice. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. For those of you watching from our Facebook live stream, I'm so glad you joined us today. If you'd like to get more information on how to join services in Zoom, you can visit um, or you can fill out the visitor link on our Facebook comments. And those attending in Zoom will take uh, time after service to share joys and concerns in our own, um, our own voices. Our closing words this morning are from Annie Forster. As far as our love flows, as far as our hope grows, as far as our yearning goes, we are no farther from each other. Be love, uh, be justice, and, and be good to yourselves. It's a hard time, and may you walk it uh, with beauty and love. Amen and blessed be.